Hi, I'm Rachel, and welcome to my channel, La Bricoleuse, where I share tips, techniques, and project blogs from over 25 years working as a costume craftsperson. This video is my contribution to Virtual Jane Con, an Austin-filled weekend online. Programming varies from Regency costuming to academic discussions on Austin's works and cultural legacy. It's a fun, wide-ranging event that encapsulates the myriad interests and talents of the Jane Austen community, while remaining online and free to see, making it available to all fans with access to social media platforms. As a milliner, I feel an affinity with Jane Austen, who not only wore hats and bonnets regularly, but remade and decorated them herself. Not much of her correspondence was preserved, but in the surviving letters, she makes reference to refashioning hats for herself and her sister, Cassandra. So I always think of her fondly when I work on a stage adaptation of one of her novels, because I'm a theatrical milliner. And typically, I make whatever hats are required for the show in production at the theater where I work. But when the COVID-19 pandemic shut down performing arts venues in 2020, I realized I had the rare opportunity to make whatever style of hat I wanted. This is not my first experience making a drawn bonnet style. In 2009, the theater I work for mounted a stage adaptation of Jane Austen's novel Pride and Prejudice, for which I made this Silk Dupioni bonnet for the character of Charlotte Lucas. When I made that bonnet, there wasn't anything I could find online about creating the style. So I wrote about my process in a blog post linked in the description to this video. I also teach a class in theatrical millinery in the costume production graduate program at UNC Chapel Hill, for which I've advised on several student projects that involved similar construction methods, such as this 18th century striped calash and this Regency traveling bonnet that not only looks great, it also flattens for packing. To be clear, this video is not a tutorial. It's a project vlog, and I approach and describe this project as a theatrical milliner. I typically have one chance to determine how I'll make a hat and to do it in time for a show to open. I learn something each time I make a style, and any ideas I have for how to make it better can only be incorporated if I need to make more than one or in future similar hats. When I decided to create this bonnet, I wanted a project that could be easily made by any creative maker with basic sewing skills and an excitement for experimentation. I used inexpensive materials and no specialized equipment. And the method I devised involves no waste in the fabric cutting. I used a yard of 54 inch wide polyester taffeta I chose this fabric because it was available in a good color for the Regency era of the bonnet I wanted to make, because taffeta is a good crisp textile for this style of millinery, and because it was on liquidation sale for $3 a yard. Here's the cutting diagram I used for this bonnet. I developed this schematic based on the size of the fabric I used and informed by drawn bonnet research like this excellent book on the construction of surviving drawn bonnets of the mid-19th century, and three blog posts by historical costumer Twyla T. All linked in the description to this video. In making the Charlotte Lucas drawn bonnet, I made and lined each component of the style, then assembled them all at the end. I decided to make this bonnet in the same way, creating the scoop of the brim separately from the back crown. I had hoped that the crispness of the taffeta would be strong enough to support the bonnet shape without wire around the perimeter so that mine could also be flattened like the one my student made. 
I realized that in order to control the bonnet shape the way I wanted, I'd have to use millinery wire support to stabilize the brim perimeter. Sadly, my bonnet doesn't pack flat for traveling. I manipulated the density of the gathers to achieve this dramatic shape, more cosmopolitan than the simpler Pope bonnet styles of the Regency period. I stitched on the bavelet, the ruffle at the nape of the neck, then trimmed the finished bonnet with these beautiful antique ribbons and fabric flowers from M&S Schmalberg, the last surviving handmade flower business in the U.S., linked in the description to this video. These styles of bonnet structures are fun to make and an interesting challenge for an intermediate milliner or anyone who enjoys sewing and wants to experiment with bonnet making without access to specialized millinery materials or equipment. If you give making a drawn bonnet a try, please comment or find me on Instagram and share an image of what you make.